Last week, Ragna Metals sold its wholly owned subsidiary Ragna Metals Sweden to a subsidiary of BHP for 9.8 million and a net smelter return royalty, which it may buy out for a further 10 million. Joining me today to discuss this is Executive Director Eddie King. Eddie, nice to see you. Likewise, Chris. Good seeing you again, mate. Ragnar's market cap is just under 12 million, meaning this transaction is quite substantial. How transformational is this deal for Ragnar in terms of growth opportunities that it might open up? Look, I think that word transformation transformational has been thrown around too much, but I think this deal has been incredibly important for Ragnar. Um, but yes, it's been great for our growth opportunities. Organically in Sweden, we can fund our existing exploration activities for quite some time without having to tap investors again. Inorganically, it's been quite interesting as that there aren't many companies out there walking around with you know 10 million in cash. So we get quite a bit of inbound interest asking, what are we going to do with the cash? Uh, I can tell you that we're aiming to spend it wisely. And Eddie, what was the catalyst to sell Toolstar and Gadebo to BHP? So Toolstar is a tier one asset and it required significant financial and technical resources to be properly explored. Um, and it was a district scale project, which you, know, you, you need widespread magnetics, deep drilling. And so we had a choice. Do we raise further capital in, you know, in depressed equity capital markets or um, to maybe add value? Or do we take the cash offer with potential upside from BHP? You know, it was a tough decision at the time, but yeah, our market cap was $6 million and we were offered a $20 million headline deal. So we, we had to accept. And what is the company's main focus and to what extent will the proceeds from the sale of BHB be deployed at these existing Swedish assets? Yeah, look, our, our main focus is to, to add value for Ragnar shareholders, however, however that may be. And you know, currently, that's to explore for critical minerals in Sweden. Um, Ragnar is going to benefit with our strong balance sheet and from our technical teams in Australia and Sweden, which yeah, they came up with the idea of staking the lithium and rare earth tenure we currently have. The, the Bergholm Lithium project is what our exploration is focused on currently, um, which we expanded further with the recent acquisition of the Orvik project. Um, Orvik has two known spodumene occurrences at surface. So we're going to deploy minimal exploration funds there to see if we can find a nice juicy target. Um, we know there's lithium there, so we need to get, get it to a point um, to know if there is scale. Um, it's a similar approach to what we did with Tallstar. And Eddie, longer term, how might M&A form part of Ragnar's growth strategy? And would it stay in Sweden or is there scope to diversify into other geographical regions? And if so, what sort of regions would be attractive? I think we shouldn't limit ourselves to, to one jurisdiction only. So there is scope to diversify to other jurisdictions. Um, but, you know, ultimately, whatever helps with adding value to shareholders. But, you know, Sweden is a hard jurisdiction to top as it's a great place to operate. Um, as I've mentioned before, it's a lot, it has a long history of mining and processing, stretching back more than a thousand years. Um, we have a great experience and experienced in-country team we work closely with in GeoVista. And yeah, Sweden is strategically located to battery and EV manufacturers, which positions Ragnar to take advantage of the Euro European EV boom. Should the company continue to assess inorganic growth opportunities, would it consider diversifying into other commodities or is the preference with lithium and perhaps rare earths? Yeah, great question. Um, I, I, I speak for myself here, but the, the focus for explorers should be in looking for quality projects, whatever commodity that adds value for, for shareholders. Whilst I, I really like what we currently have, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend a change in direction if there's a higher quality project, which has a strong chance to, to add value. And yeah, this can be acquired organically or inorganically. Um, so yes, currently I like lithium and other minerals considered critical towards um, electric vehicle growth and decarbonization, but I, I wouldn't um, limit ourselves. And Ragnar now has a lot of prospective options within its portfolio. What does the landscape look like as we round out the year and head into 2024? Yeah, to, to round out the year, we're, we're waiting for um, uh, assay results from our recent site visit at the Bergholm Lithium Project. Um, and, you know, if, if all the signs are positive, um, then we'll prepare for a winter drilling program there to see if we can find more spodumene to, to scale the project further. But, you know, as, as we've noted, uh, we have cash. Uh, we're not scared to spend it and so we're open for business so you never know what deal will walk through the door that was ragnar metals executive director eddie king eddie thanks very much for your time thanks chris